Year's resolution is to be more sustainable. We are talking sustainable seafood this morning here with the fish counter. Not only uh, can you get your fish here, but we're also going to talk uh, some recipes. Of course, they also have a restaurant here, Jody. Sustainable seafood, also a great option for those who are thinking, I'm going to try and eat healthier in their New Year's resolution. Exactly. Perhaps a resolution to eat healthier. Definitely talking sustainable. And it's nice to start off the new year with a familiar face. Mike McDermott used to be with the Vancouver Aquarium, and now you brought that philosophy here to the fish counter. Absolutely. It's uh, all about sustainable seafood here and, uh, and great quality seafood. And of course, here in BC, you know, I think other than mama, dada, first word is now sustainable. So what exactly is sustainable for someone who is maybe learning that word first time? Well, I think for us, what it means is, is uh, having seafood that's harvested responsibly so we can ensure the health of that species and the oceans for future generations. Now, of course, you uh, have a fresh fish here. What do you have here today? Well, today we have beautiful sable fish, lingcod, coho salmon, and pink salmon, and these are all what we get direct from local producers. They're all local fish and sustainably harvested. And of course, not only do you provide, obviously, the fish here, but you are here on Main Street. Why this location and how does uh, the sustainable also translate into the building here? Well, really it was because this is one community that didn't have a sustainable seafood store so we really want to be a market store and we took the philosophy of sustainability in the whole build that we did so we've got a lot of reclaimed wood here in fact this beam is from the original Woodward store uh, and also we with the having the hot food and the restaurant side it means that we can use the whole animal we can use the whole fish the bones everything in soups and stocks and sauces so we can really get to n over 95 percent use of the animal wow that truly is sustainable and yes we are talking food because Jody not only can people get their fish here you can pick up a little Robert Clark here as well. <laughs> We're going to be making up a uh, fish taco coming up in the next segment. Hey, Robert, give a little wave to Jody there. There you go. <laughs> mm, I know. Who wouldn't want a fish taco at what time in the morning? 7.20 in the morning, Robert. By the way, thanks for getting up early for us. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you know it's that it's, you know, it's so great that you got up early for us. We're making a fish taco. What do you have going on in there? So here we have some local lingcon, and we just got it in our, uh, our batter, which... Uh, Ian, Ian Johansson is actually our fry guy. He, uh, him and I developed this uh, batter recipe. Stays crisp. It's, it's fantastic. And it's actually. beer. It's got beer in it. So it's Nelson, got, our camera have, guy, like that a lot. It's got to have beer in it. So you've obviously got uh, the fish in the fryer right yeah. now. There's something very special about your fryers that you have here. Uh, yeah. Well, we have a bank of fryers, and in particular, we uh, we wanted the ability to do gluten free. So we have one dedicated solely for the fish for our gluten free batter. So you can have fish fries. Perfect. It's all uh, not to worry for anybody that. Uh, is intolerant to uh, to eat. Excellent. Now so. you've got obviously the taco port of our fish taco, so the tortilla just warming yep. up there. So these are made by uh, Rosa, little uh, Mexican <laughs> lady who had a taqueria here, but she moved to Maple Ridge, and uh, now this is what she does: is she uh, she supplies us, thank God, with uh, with these wonderful corn tortillas. And that, that sort of just again fits in with your philosophy of using local and and as local much as suppliers. you can, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's very important to Mike and I. Uh, that we support uh, as, as anything local, that, as much local as we can. How wonderful. So now, of course, great, yeah. our fish should be almost done here. For anyone yeah. that is making a fish taco at home and frying it themselves, I'm always kind of scared about how hot the oil needs to be. How hot does yeah. it have to be? Well, I think you should come down here. It's much safer. <laughs> of course no. it is. Uh, the oil should be about 350, 375 is kind of where we're, uh, is what we're looking at. Okay. Um, and it, how long it depends on the take? thickness of the fish, but okay. that's about where we run it here. So... Perfect. The tacos are very simple. This is Baja style, but this is my little take on it. It's not really Baja part of it. This is definitely a Baja sauce. A little bit of uh, cabbage. Well, I love it. For people that want to, again, buy their fish here at the fish counter, you can do that. But you can also, Michelle, come and get prepared meals. Uh, not a, oh, that was a little bit of a glooper there. Way to start the new year, of it's course. It's so early. <laughs> it's so early, Michelle. Again, you can uh, eat here at the fish counter. You can also pick up prepared meals and... I gotta, I gotta try this here. Hold on. Mmm. Lime was excellent on there. Mmm. Mmm. That's awesome to right. hear. Service right. with a smile. Gotta check that out. <laughs> Well, definitely, you know what, there's a lot of indulging over the holidays, and no, here I start the new year with a fork in hand at the fish counter. But, Robert, what we're making right now is a very uh, friendly dish for those that are watching the waistline. Yeah, we're just doing like a bouillabaisse, like a fish stew here, and seafood is healthy, and, the, and actually the, the whole dish is healthy because like onions and fennel and garlic and saffron and, and a little bit of olive oil, so it's, it's a great thing to be eating in the new year. And what kind of fish are you putting in there? Well, today I'm just putting some uh, manila clams, some mussels we got 
from Sawmill Bay, a little bit of wild Pacific salmon, and some lingcod. Now, when you say today I'm putting in this, it's because the recipe can essentially change at any given time. Uh, yeah, especially here at the shop, it can change from week to week depending on what what seafood we have we have in you know so and it will change it does change and it should change as a variety in your diet right? and of course focusing really on sustainable here at the fish counter not only can people buy their fish but they can buy uh, meals here they can have a little bit of a lunch now if you're not into fish you're not into fish we're still a great place to come. you're still no. great because you have other options right yeah we do a lot of vegan type type dishes and essentially we don't we don't combine the seafood with the sides so you can just come in and get saffron rice or you know whatever some a kamut salad nice. or chickpea salad or Perfect. these things yeah and now then you've got essentially uh when it's all finished it is this yep. beautiful stewy deliciousness yeah, it won't take very long it's just finishing up there right Seconds. now yeah um and you guys have been very busy here again on main street you tie in uh so many great sustainable aspects also from the way the building and your d decor is uh, yeah, we try to be as, as sustainable as possible. A lot of what's here is reclaimed, reclaimed wood and stuff. All our packaging is, uh, what we put our food in is backyard compostable. So basically our this goes in with the food waste and, you know, it's picked up. We're trying to be as, as have as little impact as possible. I love it. Well, I'll let yeah. you dish me up some of that beautiful bully base because, again, watching the waistline, and he says this is healthy. I'm sure that means that I can eat bowls and bowls and bowls of it, Jody. <laughs> he says, no, he's giving me the reality check. For more yeah. details on the fish counter, location and menu of course you can go to their website base here at the fish counter and I can tell you right now it tastes delicious I can myself can't imagine how I would make it don't worry there Jody they have a selection of pre-made things from bases to soups and look at this even a little tartar sauce I've been looking for a good tartar sauce I'm glad to know Robert Clark can make his way into my kitchen for more details on the fish counter go to the website and we're gonna talk more with them coming up just before nine o'clock yeah thanks very much guys you here at the fish counter the newly opened fish counter here on Main so I'm behind the counter right now we are talking sustainable fish we're going to shuck the perfect oyster and find out how these two guys, Mike McDermott and Robert Clark, ended up in business together. Stay with us. You're watching BT. Exactly. And, you know, kind of I sort of equate Robert Clark to the king of sustainability. I mean, I'm not trying to build you up there, but really, Robert, uh, you and Mike have this great partnership that ties in the sustainable, but also the seafood that everyone loves. So we're here at the fish counter, just opened up. You're busy right now. What are you doing? I'm just getting the oyster. This is our fresh oyster shucking okay. station for our customers, but I'm just shucking oysters for our pole boys that will serve at lunch today. I love so that. So that's what I'm doing. And we're talking business, figuring out. How did you guys end up in business together, Mike? How did this all sort of come about? It, it actually came about because of this area. The Main Street community is such a great, vibrant community, lots of great restaurants, but there was no sustainable seafood store. And, and for Robert and I, so passionate about the oceans and ocean-wise and things like that, we uh, we just thought like one of the big things for us is that seafood, sustainable seafood, needs to be accessible. And so we thought somebody should open a fish store on Main Street. And so why not you guys? And uh, Robert, of course, you are shucking oysters right now. I love that people can come here. They can shuck their own oysters or you guys can do it for them, right? Yeah, we'll do them. We did a lot over Christmas and New Year's. We did a lot of shucking. People took them home for their parties and stuff because it can be intimidating. But And people actually, a lot of customers come up, just order one oyster or two, eat it, and then leave. And then leave. Can sometimes you show us how Sometimes they pay and sometimes they don't. <laughs> can you shuck one for us and show us how it's done for everyone at home? Oh, my God. Now the pressure. pressure's on. So these are Sawmill Bay oysters, and Steve does a fantastic job. You'll see how full of, uh, and this is a great time of the year to be eating oysters, but you see how full and how juicy and succulent that is. Essentially, I should have told you, sorry, you pop the, the way I do is I pop it, then you put the, your blade at 45 degree angle and you basically scrape the top of the shell so that you don't leave any meat there and this comes out. Then you just loosen it. Now, I like to leave it this way. For me, that means you shucked it properly. Okay. If you made a mistake, you flip it over. Oh, that's so, a great tip so for people I don't, at home. No, don't make the mistake. Don't <laughs> make the mistake in the first place. <laughs> Shuck it know. right in the first place. <laughs> you don't have to flip it over. Exactly. Or, of course, you can just get it shucked for you right here at the fish counter where, Jody, by the way, you can pick up all your fresh fish. You can also pick up pre-made uh, meals, soups, sauces, bouillabaisse, all that kind of good stuff, and all done by the pros like Robert Clark and Mike McDermott. And here we go. That's how you start a new year. Oh, great way to start a morning. Mm -hmm. I think we're going po' boy for lunch. That's